our topic for today is the instantaneous rate of change. This is considerably more uh, useful in the real world when you talk about um, how fast things are changing. Usually this is what people um, mean when they say how fast something is changing. Um, it's not an average over some duration of time, but it is actually how fast it's changing at this moment, at one specific instant. That's why it's called instantaneous. It's not the average over some duration, but it is the rate of change, how fast something is changing at a particular moment. So you could use this to answer questions like, you know, if I have uh, some stock investment, you know, the stock goes up and down all day long. Um, how fast exactly was my investment changing value at uh, 12.57 p.m.? That's one place you would use the instantaneous rate of change. Or if you uh, give somebody some medicine which is supposed to change their blood sugar or something, you could ask, um, how fast was the blood sugar changing 10 minutes after I gave them the, the, uh, the shot? Or, um, you know, in physics or something, how fast is the rocket moving after I have... Uh, run the engine for five seconds or something like that. All of these things you would use the instantaneous rate of change because you're asking about how fast is it changing at some specific moment, not uh, the average over a certain duration of time. More useful than the average rate of change, uh, but harder to do, actually considerably harder to do if you want to actually uh, work through all the details by hand, which we are going to do. Here's the idea though. So remember the average rate of change was, uh, you know, from A to B. You always have some kind of range, and the formula for that was very easy to work with. F of B minus F of A over B minus A. Right, this is the average rate of change. We should think of this as something like the average speed, the average speed between time A and B over that duration from A to B, what was the average speed, okay? Instead of this, we would like to know about for example, what is the speed just right at time A in that moment? What was the speed then? Um, the idea here is to look at this average speed, but you consider it only when the B is like super close to the A. So we consider the average rate of change, but when B is really, really close To a right this will make it you know the problem with this is there's this like duration this long duration but if you want to know really the speed right at the particular time a um, really you would like to do something like this only you consider B to be like almost exactly the same as a B is very close to a so that 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 duration instead of being a long duration is like an instantaneously you know small duration of course, this really, really close, we have language to express that mathematically. We are talking about a limit. So the instantaneous rate of change in a formula is written in terms of limits. And this is how we write it. The instantaneous rate of change at x equal a. This you think of as like a specific um, point in time. The instantaneous rate of change at x equal a is written like this. So this right here is the function. Uh, that guy is a prime. It's a little little uh, apostrophe, but we call it prime. So this, we say f prime of a, and the formula is this, lim b goes to a, f of b minus f of a, divided by b minus a. So this here is the formula for the average rate of change from a to b. But I'm considering that when the B is like super, super close to the A, all right? When you do this, since this is a, a limit where the B is approaching the A, eventually this, the Bs will sort of disappear from this formula. And all you get is something in terms of A, which we call the instantaneous rate of change at A. And we write F prime of A. All right, uh, actually, so this is an important formula, but in our book, they don't write it this way. They write it in a slightly different way. Um, if we take... If you just rearrange this, instead of writing uh, with a B, if you write B as A plus H, so you think of B as being the same as A but plus a little bit, then this formula writes uh, is written this way. In this format, it's a little easier to, um, to handle. So we're going to use the formula as written in this format. If you just change the B to A plus H, this will say F of A plus H minus F of A 
I'm gonna leave like it is. Down here, B minus A. If B is A plus H, then it says A plus H minus A. The A's will cancel and you just get H, all right? So this is the formula that we are most often going to use. You can use either formula, but it turns out this second one is, it maybe looks a little more complicated, but actually the second one is a little easier to, to handle. So this is the formula for the instantaneous rate of change. All right, it's a major concept that we're gonna be talking about for the next few weeks, also known as the derivative. Um, can we just talk briefly about what does this look like on a picture? Does it mean anything geometrically on the picture? What if we have a picture, say like this, a parabola, where maybe the A is here? What does the instantaneous rate of change look like on the picture? Remember the average rate of change uh, looked like some kind of slope of a line. In fact, if I were to talk about the average rate of change, say from A to B, where B is here, if you recall from last time, the average rate of change is the slope of that line, all right? Um, so this line here, the slope is the uh, average rate of change is this slope. Is the instantaneous rate of change represented by a slope of something, of anything? Um, this line here, uh, tells you the average rate of change from A to B. You have to imagine what will happen geometrically on this picture if you take this point B and you slide it this way towards A because that's what the instantaneous rate of change is about is if we consider the B and the A to be really, really close together. What if you slide this B towards the A? Check it out, I made a helpful little computer animation. You will see as the B slides closer to the A, the line connecting the, uh, the A and the B actually tends towards a single line when the B gets very close to A. What that line looks like is a special line. It's called the tangent line at A. I hope this is a, a term you've heard before. This right here is not the tangent line because this line intersects the curve twice. But the tangent line at A is one, I'm gonna erase this just so it's a little clearer. I don't care about average rate of change anymore. The tangent line at A is the line which touches the curve only in one point, and it is at that point A, all right? It is this line. You will see in that little uh, animation I showed you, as the B approaches the A, what that line approaches is this. This is called the tangent line at A. And it is a fact, which I will write up here. This is the geometric interpretation of the instantaneous rate of change. The instantaneous rate of change, F prime of A, is the slope of the tangent line at X equal A. It really is. So this is a geometric interpretation of the instantaneous rate of change. It is the slope of the tangent line at x equals a. Positive slope means on the picture it looks like that. That means the graph is going up. Over here, the slope would be pointing down. That means negative. So this number here, it tells you how steep the graph is. That's an abstract point of view um, meaning of this number. It's how steep the graph is. Positive would mean steep going up. Negative would mean steep going down. I suppose zero would mean just not going up or down, like flat at that moment. All right, this is the uh, geometric interpretation of the instantaneous rate of change. Let's do an example computation of the instantaneous rate of change. If I tell you a function, can you tell me the instantaneous rate of change at whatever, uh, whatever value? Let's try, here's an example, specific example. Let's say f of x equals x squared, and then I would like you to find f prime of three. This would be the instantaneous rate of change at three. On the picture, it would be the, you know, if this is the graph of x squared, not a very good picture. You go over to three, right? And you look at the tangent line, the slope of that. I expect this to be a fairly steep, you know, positive number, right? Um, because the graph is going up. Uh, maybe if you were to estimate this, how, how exactly what is the slope of that? If I go over one up, I don't know. This is not an accurate picture, but something, uh, something positive, certainly. 
Uh, let's see if we can do it. We use the formula, right? F prime, I will refresh your memory. The formula is this. F prime of A is lim H goes to zero. F of A plus H minus F of A over H. You definitely need to memorize this formula. We're going to be using this uh, quite a bit in the next few, uh, you know, few times, week, week or so, a couple weeks. I don't know. You got to remember the formula. Um, I'm going to do all of this, but uh, my focus is on three. So I'm going to use a equals three when I do this. So f prime of three. I'm just going to go. Okay, this is f of. I'm plugging in three for a everywhere. Three plus h minus f of three divided by h, right? We must continue to simplify here. How do we plug in f of three plus h and f of three? Actually, f of three is easier. This is still lim, h goes to zero. Um, can I do f of three first? The function f of x equal x squared. I plug three into that function, I get three squared, which is nine, of course, but I'll write it as three squared for now. This one, 3 plus h, is a little bit harder. That means when you do f of 3 plus h, it means you go to this function and you replace the x by 3 plus h. It looks like this. 3 plus h squared. f of x is x squared. That means whatever you plug into f, you get the same thing squared. If I want to plug in 3 plus h, I get 3 plus h squared. I'm replacing every x here by a 3 plus h. And make sure you put those parentheses uh, I know some people are kind of parentheses haters. You don't like to write parentheses. It's best in this class if you uh, if you cultivate an attitude of a parentheses lover because you'll confuse yourself uh, pretty quickly if you just decide not to write parentheses where you should have. Anyway, 3 plus h, the whole thing squared. Okay, let's continue to simplify. At this point, it's just the limit of some weird-looking thing. And we know how to do limits of weird-looking things. We talked about that a few times ago. Day, uh, episode two, I believe. Anyway, what am I gonna do to simplify here? Well, three squared is nine, so I can do that. How about three plus h squared? You gotta square that out, do the foil thing. Can I just do it over here? Three plus h times three plus h, right? On the front, we get nine. On the inside, we get three times h, and on the outside, we also get three times h. And on the end, we get h squared, all right? So this becomes nine plus 3h plus 3h plus h squared minus 9 divided by h. All right, can we simplify anything here? Well, these three h's can add together. Give me 6h and the 9 and the 9 will cancel. So those go away. These are going to add up to 6h. All right, what can we do now? Uh, it looks like we can uh, factor h out on the top. So this is then h goes to 0 h times 6 plus h divided by h. Dim h's will cancel. We get 6 plus h. h goes to 0. 6 plus h. And finally, now, this is as simple as this is going to get. We can finally do the limit by plugging the value in for h. We plug h equals 0 over here, and we simply get 6. 6 is the answer. Apparently, the slope of this line right here is 6. That means it goes over 1 and up 6, right? Which looks maybe reasonable. I don't know. I, I just drew this in a second. Not, not very accurately. All right. 6 is the answer. Let's just try one more. All right. Here's one more. This one's a little more complicated, but it's similar to the one we just did. Find f prime of 2. That is the instantaneous rate of change at x equal 2 for this value here, f or this function, f of x equal 3x squared minus x. All right. We begin by writing the definition of the instantaneous rate of change. It was f prime of a is f of, uh, sorry, lim, h goes to 0, f of a plus h, I'm using a is 2, so it's like that, minus f of a, which is 2, divided by h, like so. And now we got to plug everything in simplify eventually take the limit as h goes to zero and we should get a number for the answer which represents the slope of this graph at the point uh, two let's do it okay first step this actually in my experience this is where uh, a lot of people mess it up just from the get-go is plugging in to the original function so i i see f of two plus h what that means is you read this formula here and you replace x everywhere you see it by 
2 plus h and make sure you put parentheses in there. So I see 3 and then x squared, I'm plugging in 2 plus h, it looks like this. 3 times 2 plus h squared minus, instead of x, I put 2 plus h in parentheses. If you don't put these parentheses, you'll mess up the uh, minus sign there. Okay, that was just this part, f of 2 plus h. You go over here, and everywhere you see x, you plug 2 plus h instead of x. All right, and then minus, that's right here, this minus, f of 2. I go here and plug x equals 2. That's easy enough. I get 3 times 2 squared minus 2. Make sure you put those parentheses also, because this minus sign will have to uh, distribute. All right, all divided by h. Any parentheses haters out there? Get a new outlook on life. Parentheses are your friend, all right? Okay, let's, uh, let's continue to simplify whatever we can. So lim h goes to zero. Three times two plus h squared. Remember your order of operations here. You gotta do the square first, and then we'll multiply the whole thing by three. So this is three times, and now I'm gonna multiply the foil, two plus h. All right, two plus h times two plus h, what do I get? Four on the front. 2h in the middle, 2h on the outside, that makes 4h plus h squared, right? So this guy goes right here, three times that stuff, four plus 4h plus h squared, minus, all right, let's distribute the minus sign here, so it's minus two, minus, h, and then this, how about we just uh, compute the number inside the parentheses. Order of operations, remember you square first, so two squared is four, times three would be 12, and then I subtract two, I get 10. So this is minus 10. Deep, 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 deep. All right, we're getting somewhere. We gotta just keep on simplifying. What can I do in the next step? I will distribute the three here. So lim h goes to zero. I got 12 plus 12h plus 3h squared minus 2 minus h minus 10 divided by h. All right. I hope you're. Uh, I hope you're getting all this right. There's a lot of mistakes uh, possible here. A lot of chances to screw this up. Just make a little mistake. You will be totally screwed for the rest of the thing. Unfortunately, you got to be careful as you do this. Okay. What can simplify here? I think these constants can combine. I got a 12, a 2, and a 10. What happens? I think these constants will cancel actually, right? I have a plus 12, a minus two, and a minus 10. So the constants will cancel. And what remains is a 12h. Actually, I can, so these just go away. Um, I also have 12h and a minus one h, so that will be 11h plus three h squared divided by h. And now I can, as we usually do, factor h out on the top. This actually, the end of these problems will always look like this. You, you uh, will always finish by factoring h out of the top and then canceling 11 plus 3h, all right? This is only possible if all the constants um, disappeared, right? Because if there was a constant left over, you wouldn't be able to factor the h out of everything. This was not a coincidence that all the constants disappeared. If you're doing it correctly, all the constants will always disappear. If you have a constant left over here, it, it means you messed something up. Probably you messed up parentheses or you did the foil wrong or something. Anyway, cancel the H's. We're almost done here. 11 plus three H. And now finally I can plug in H equals zero here and I get 11 is my answer. That's how we do the instantaneous rate of change. It is a lot of uh, opportunity to mess it up, but um, if you're careful, it's not so difficult.